Welcome back to Morning Cup. Today, I'm so excited because I have Jessica Harrington with me, and Jessica received her master's in public health at Westchester University. She's the owner of Journey to Yourself, is a speaker and stress management coach. Through her career in education, she realized that we all have a common issue. Everyone, at some point or another, struggles with handling stress. Through her own life journey, Jessica created Journey to Yourself. Thank you so much for being here today, Jessica. Oh my God. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to do this. I'm excited to have you and just really dive into your journey. Like we were talking about earlier, there's so many things I want to touch on today, but I will let you just share with us in a nutshell, your journey of entrepreneurship thus far. Yeah, of course. And you kind of mentioned right before we were off air, I think self-love is definitely the biggest key to entrepreneurship. You know, there's a lot of books out there and, you know, followers and Instagram. I mean, there's so many, you know, gurus out there and they tell you how to do your marketing plan and how do you do a business plan and how do you create a website? But what I think a lot of us miss is the self-love and the self-care part about being an entrepreneur, because the biggest thing I feel when, you know, I have my days is that it can be really lonely can be really lonely, you know? And so I, I will say, um, that is something that I have to practice during my entrepreneurship for sure. Yes. It is an important piece. And what got you here today? Because I know you have gone through the ups and downs, but really, if you could dive a little further into what was your experience like from starting your business till now? Yeah, of course. So, so I started my business this business is about to be two years old next month. So I'm excited. <laughs> and so I started the business. So super much of what I do. So I'm a stress management coach. Um, I learned about burnout, you know, through my education, through my career. I learned about stress. I was working at a drug and alcohol rehab. And this is where I l- learned all of it. What stress is, what burnout is, everything about it. And um, so fast forward, got my master's in public health. And that's when I had all my multiple hats on. I was school full-time, part-time job, full-time job, internships, you know, relationships. And, um, I actually experienced burnout myself. I was actually diagnosed with chronic mono and I was like, what the heck is chronic mono? And they said, well, you keep getting yourself so sick. You keep getting yourself so worked up. And so basically you keep giving yourself mono. Like this is insane. So really learned about burnout even more than I, you know, I experienced before. And so that's kind of where this whole journey to yourself really began, because I really felt I was in all these different relationships with other people in the sense of having different hats, right? So I was an employee, I was going to start a business, I was, you know, a girlfriend, you know, things like that, a a best friend, and it gets overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so that's when the new business, once I did my healing, start my business to journey to yourself. And that's really what it is. It's making sure you don't lose yourself in the piece. But going back to what I was saying earlier, it's practicing what I preach, right? So Mm -hmm. what am I doing every day? Because when I first started my business two years ago, it was a clean slate. There's not a handbook. There's handbooks, but for your own business, you know, it's Mm -hmm. different for everybody, right? And so like I was saying about the lonely piece, I don't have entrepreneurs in my life, right? So I have a lot of friends that, you know, might have their own business or things like that because I started a business and that's how I met them. But it was never because I just knew somebody I grew up with. Like, oh, let me show you. This is what I did, you know? This yeah. is how I did it. So it, it there's just a lot of lonely and frustration nights for sure because you do a launch, you do a post, you send out an email and you just get so excited because you're so proud of your work. And then- you get one like, you get one response or nobody shows up to your class. And, you know, we get told if we do these certain steps that it's going to work out no matter what, but that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. And so learning to go learn how to handle those lows has been something really, something I, I continue to work with throughout my, my entrepreneurship for sure. Yes. You know, you said a couple of things there with just having that support system, knowing like, especially when you start the entrepreneurial journey, I mean, across the board, it's a lonely journey, but being able to find people in your community that are entrepreneurs, but like, like you, I didn't have entrepreneurs in my life. And like, it was education, school, like 
do all those things. I had a lot of friends that were psychologists like around me, like as I got further along, but starting your business too, being able to gravitate towards other entrepreneurs to help you along that journey. But I think it's important piece talking about burnout and the chronic mono that you had as well. That's, you know, I've heard so many different stories around burnout, but that's the first for me um, when it, <laughs> with chronic mono, but it's just a testament of how we can run ourselves into the ground and really not take care of ourselves because that's what happens. If we don't have our health, we can't run a successful business. We can't have healthy relationships. We get the relationship with ourselves first and foremost, because I know we'll talk about self-love too, but I love just the name of your business journey to self. Like it really is that. And where, like, I mean, this might be a silly question, but how did you come up with the title, like your business name? Oh, for sure. So, um, I agree with, yeah, it's, Chronic Mono was definitely a first, which is why that whole research started. So I was like, wait a minute, what is this? <laughs> so, um, so that, yeah, but that's a different story, right? But yeah, so <laughs> the name came up because I wanted journey. I wanted that in there. That was the one word I definitely wanted for my business because I knew um, that was what I wanted in my business because I, that's what I pictured in my life, like the different journeys, the different stages of life that I went through. Mm-hmm. That's what I really pictured in my life. And so I wanted that word journey. And it really was just that notebook where I was just like writing down different words and just seeing if they match. And so that was another word that I liked. I was like, oh, yourself. So yourself to what, you know, it was like, oh, I had like six different sentences. And then I just called a couple of friends. I'm like, okay, these are the ones I'm stuck with. And then my one girlfriend's like, what if you just put two here? I'm going, oh, well, that makes sense. (laughs) Good friend. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I was like, I really like that. Thank you. (laughs) I love hearing the story behind it. (laughs) Um, but I'm curious because like you dealt with so much burnout and like all the stress you had, what are maybe five easy ways to manage stress that you could share with us today? Yeah, of course. So one of the five things that I really speak about, again, I learned through my journey would Mm -hmm. be communication. So there's two parts to communication, right? It's communicating to others first, right? Like what I need, what I want, how I feel, things like that. But it's also communicating to yourself, which I've kind of put in the self-love category, but there's two things when it comes to communication. So the super nutshell with communication is the ones I always say is avoid the words always and never. So you always are too busy for me. You never listen to me. And I, right. And so the first thing that someone happens is they become defensive, right? So now we're in the defense battle and we're not even going to the solution. We're just going, doing the one uppers, you know, (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) we've all been there, right? Um, the second one I always talk about is your environment. So your environment, think about what your environment looks like. You know, I'm not saying you have to be color coded and, you know, number code, whatever. It doesn't have to be that bad or not bad, like that extreme, but you know, is it clean? Is it organized? When I'm about to do a phone call with you, do I have my pen and notebook with me? Do I have the things that I need with me? If I'm traveling, do I have the necessities with me? Am I taking care of being organized in that way, right? Um, But also in the sense of your own space. So for me, this office is my space. This is my space. This is my energy. This is my vibe. This is my love, you know? So what does it look like? Mm-hmm. You know, we all had those new pair of shoes that we're like, we're never going to wear. I right? like can wear them for special occasion, but it's, we have to take care of our environment the same way we would take care of those brand new shoes or that brand new car, right? We, we yeah. cherish it. We make sure that it's clean all the time, you know, things like that. But the other piece to your environment is who's in your environment. You talked about support in the beginning. So who is your cheerleader? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, talking about burnout, we get stuck in gossip a lot. It's so easy to be like, well, who, what is she doing? Well, oh, here's her social media. Check out what she's doing right now. Or you're at work and you're at the water cooler. You know, it's, well, did you hear about so-and-so, you know, and just ask yourself, you know, the, when you leave that gossip conversation, do you ever just skip going, oh, so glad we talked about Karen today. You know, <laughs> you never leave a gossip conversation feeling high, you rush, right? It's not a thing. Um, the third one I talk about is acceptance. So a lot of times when we think about acceptance, we think about, oh, well, that's just it. There's nothing I can do about it. And we walk away. Mm-hmm. When we look up the word acceptance, it means acknowledge. It means becoming aware. So I'm becoming aware of the situation. I know that I'm a morning person, but I don't like, being, I don't like talking in the morning. So when I first, I, I accept that I can get up really early, mm-hmm. but we're not going to talk over coffee this early. Right. So I accept that 
when he comes home, he needs five minutes to decompress. Mm -hmm. So it's more, I'm becoming aware. It's not just, well, there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The fourth one is going to be mindfulness. So mindfulness in the sense of yoga, meditation, they're so amazing. They're great. There's a love, you love all that. But for me, when I was first starting my journey, I didn't want to meditate. I didn't want yoga, right? Because mm -hmm. it was hard for me, or maybe I felt embarrassed going to yoga classes, mm -hmm. which you shouldn't, right? That's a whole other topic. I definitely agree once I started doing it, but when you're at that really low, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. So what are some other things to do? And so the biggest thing I talk about is journaling one mm -hmm. and not just dear diary. This is my day, but <laughs> journaling, you know, getting those thoughts out. I call it like the hamster wheel, like that story that just keeps replaying. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and then, right. Right. And then we keep like, adding. <laughs> yeah. And then you keep adding stories to it throughout the day. And also it's like this big movies in your head, you know, mm -hmm. getting that out on paper is one. And then the second piece, Grant, there's so much more to mindfulness, but these are the two ones I always like hype on is mm -hmm. laughing. Yeah. There's yeah. a study that was out a four-year-old on average laughs four, I think it was 400 times a day. Oh. A four-year-old, a 40-year-old on average laughs 40 times a day or four, four, I lied to you four times a day. Wow. It's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And I always think about that one, that one saying, don't cry over spilt milk. Mm -hmm. When we bump our head, when we drop our coffee, when we miss the turn and the GPS goes yeah. recalculating, you know, <laughs> every time, <laughs> every, every time it never fails. It never fails. <laughs> But we're laughing, right? You have right. to laugh at yourself. Oh, totally. <laughs> right? You have to laugh at yourself and think about all the goodness that comes when you're laughing at yourself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the biggest one and my most favorite habit is self-love. Mm -hmm. Really is self-love and kind of going back, putting back off that communication piece mm -hmm. is how are you talking to yourself? Yeah. You know, that really goes in hand in hand with all these habits. How are you talking to yourself? And I always say it this way. Think about all the things you say to yourself every day. You're dumb, you're stupid, you're worthless, you're not loved, no one likes you, um, you should give up, and the list just goes on. Mm -hmm. But I really want you to think about if you ever put like, dear mom at the top of that, dear sister, dear best friend, dear husband, and think about would you ever say any of those to the people that you loved? Right. Right? Mm -hmm. To the people you cared about, to the people that made you happy. You don't say those things to people that you respect. And so when I say that, it just kind of has the mindset of we have to love ourselves, we have to respect ourselves, we have to make ourselves happy because mm -hmm. we set the standards for how others show up for us. Right. Mm -hmm. And I say that in the sense of we've all been to that one friend's house that, you know, you can't wear the shoes in the house. You've ever been there yeah. before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so like, you know, you can't wear their shoes in the house or you get in their car and you can't eat in their car. Well, that's the standards they've set. Right. Or that one person that doesn't drink, that's the standards that they've set, mm -hmm. but you still hang out with them. You still call them you still are friends with them. Yeah. Just acknowledging that we set the standards for how others show up for us. Oh, that was powerful. I'm just like, <laughs> everyone write that down. <laughs> It's the truth though. And, you know, I love that it is about like a, really looking at how we speak to others. We would never speak to others in a way that's demeaning um, or rude or anything like that. And we do that to ourselves. Like I know I used to do that. I was my own worst critic. I still have to check myself regularly, but sure. and it's something it's like practicing what you preach. Right. And I think too, it just like brings it home of really saying, would you say that to your mother? Would you say that to your best friend? Would you say that to your sister, your brother, your husband, your spouse, um, anybody that you really love and care about and respect? No. no. So it's really checking ourselves. And I, I just wanted to highlight that too. And, you know, when we go through stress, it really does impact like how we view ourselves as well. But could you identify just three signs of stress that you see commonly? For sure. I would say the first response to stress is always physically. Mm -hmm. So, and those are the signs we always ignore because we're like, oh, I'm tired. So I have migraines. So it's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, would, I will say, right. You're like, yeah, actually maybe I have one right now, but, um, 
<laughs> but you know, and that, like for me to kind of make paint the picture too, is my, I was twitching really bad for like a while. And I kept thinking, I'm like, oh, I have to get new glasses or I, you know, Google says you're not drinking enough water. So I'm doing that. So I finally went to the eye doctor and then I doctor goes, or, you know, and he goes, um, well, it's stress. You're causing yourself the eye twitch. I said, really? That's a thing? Like, so yeah. I, the first thing, right? So the first thing is checking your physical responses. So knowing what they are, that kind of goes that self-love piece, you know, having those self-check-ins, you know, making time for yourself. Um, but the physical sign. So learning if you're having that constant reaction. So if you're always having stomach issues, if you're always getting sick, um, migraines, I would say the biggest one in, is always is sleep as well. So it's two pieces. So either I'm sleeping too much or I'm not sleeping enough. So I would say that's usually the, like, the biggest sign um, for sure. And then another one would be just not being able to focus. Mm -hmm. If you just find your mind is kind of everywhere but here, I would say that's a huge, huge piece of stress for sure. So, yeah. Those are great ways to identify. And yes, I actually have had the eye twitch <laughs> like before. And like I kind of... I, like I Googled it a little bit because I always with my like clients when I was a therapist, I would make sure that like, okay, well, is it anything medically? Like, let's rule that out to test to see yeah. to test, but like to understand too, if it's connected to the emotions versus like physical, but I think everything connects. Um, oh, for sure. For <laughs> sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm curious, how is self-love, how can it reduce stress when we have more self-love? Yeah, of course. And I think you kind of painted the picture earlier how we perceive ourselves, how we're going to see other perceived at the outside, right? Yeah, so if yeah. I'm looking at myself like, oh, I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm successful, I um, I can do this interview without stuttering every two seconds or saying like, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, um, you know, when I start talking to myself that way, I'm going to look for wit, like for proof mm -hmm. why I'm funny, why I'm pretty, why I'm successful. I'm going to look for the proof, right? Where when I start to say I'm dumb, I'm worthless, they don't love me, I'm going to look for that proof, right? So going back to that self-love of how I'm talking to myself is how I'm going to receive the situation. But also, again, going back to those standards, when I have that self-love, I have boundaries, I have priorities. And we all know when we have boundaries and priorities, we're going to have a healthier life because I'm not going to have as much distractions. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to want to go, have, have to, and air quoting, have to go to every gender reveal party, every engagement party, every, every barbecue, you know, the list goes on about these things, right? Mm -hmm. You can just stay home because you want to stay home and not being able to give yourself that guilt trip for that, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just like absorbing it all because I totally agree with you. <laughs> and it really comes down to those priorities and boundaries and like boundaries is a huge part of like what we talk about on here as well, because it is that piece of self-love. Like once you have that self-love, it's so much easier to set those boundaries of yeah. not go feeling like you have to go to every event. Like I have a really good friend that she feels that guilt if she doesn't go and like she's working through that. And it's just like pointing that out too, that you don't have to attend everything if, especially if you're not feeling well, or just, you don't feel like going and that's okay. Yeah. It doesn't mean you love the person less, like make it up in a different way or just knowing like, I would love to come, but I can't today. Like, you know, just being able to vocalize that. And you talked about that too, that dialogue, the communication and speaking to ourselves, but also to others as well. And I love that you highlight that too. Yeah, and kind of going back to your business, what were some of maybe the roadblocks or lessons learned in the beginning or just in the journey, I should say, of what you've experienced thus far that could help somebody else realize that they're not alone? <laughs> <laughs> I would say for me, one loneliness, you know, your friends and family do want to help, but it's hard because they haven't, you know, it's harder for that business. But going with that, I would say asking for help, but also in, in, in any kind of way, you know, asking your friends to, hey, can you share this post? Can you, um, you know, can you read over this? Does it, does this make sense to you? You know, your friends want to support you or your family too. Like they want to find ways that they can support you. And I think sometimes we get, we go, oh, well, they didn't share this post or they didn't like this, or they didn't come to this event, mm -hmm. you know, and we start to kind of have that self-talk again of, oh, they don't, they don't support me. They don't care about my business. They think it's stupid. Right. 
But mm-hmm. I think it's finding the different ways with that communication of mm-hmm. how your family feels comfortable supporting, right? You know, um, I have an aunt who she's not really social media, so but she will come to all my in-person events and she will be the big. I have to pay her. She's literally the biggest PR ever. I, mean, <laughs> I have to start ha- having her go out to people because she is on point. But um, you know, like so, seeing where they feel comfortable at. Mm-hmm. You know, and seeing you know, my one girlfriend, she can't do events because she has a lot of, she has two babies and diapers and then, you know, social media, obviously it's not on the screen, but I'll call her. She helped me with my name and my business and be like, Hey, does this sound right? Mm-hmm. They want to support you. So mm-hmm. reaching out for help in ways that you might not think makes sense, but even just as, as a soundboard, you know, I have a couple of girlfriends where I just call them like, Hey, I just have to play this out. Yeah, can I just, does this make sense to somebody? Because the wall's not responding. So I just need to play this out really quick. <laughs> you yes. know, and, right, right. We've all just gone, oh, let me just talk this out loud. But I might need a little feedback. So I think reaching out for help in ways that mm-hmm. your family does know how to help, I think that's the biggest point. But it starts with that communication again, for sure. Mm-hmm. No, communication is key. But I, I love that you said too, it's like finding what, how they can support you. Because especially if you are in the beginning where not everyone around you is entrepreneurs or knows how to, but it's being able to ask or just getting creative with it too. Like I have my sound boards as well that are not just the walls <laughs> as well, you know, like calling the people I know, like, Hey, does this make sense? Or, you know, because you could read it a million times and you're like, Oh, okay. This sounds okay. But then somebody might catch something. And you're like, Oh, I didn't even think of that. I didn't think about that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, such important tips um, and lessons learned for sure. And when you're looking at your journey, what has been maybe one or two clients that you've had that you've really had success with that you could share with us today? Yeah, of course. You know, I always like highlighting the quote unquote small wins because I think the small ones bit build on the big ones, right? And mm-hmm. that's just in a daily life in general. But I will remember my one client, she called me on Monday Mm -hmm. and she was like, I just want to let you know that I'm so excited because I had the Sunday scaries. It was a big thing for her. Like she would drink a lot. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, she would have Sunday scaries and she would say, um, I I talked myself out of it. I talked myself out of it. I was able to go to sleep last night. Wow. And to me, you're like, Oh, well, she just goes to sleep. But to me, it's, that's such a great feeling that she was able to do something on her own. That proud moment of accomplishment of, oh my gosh, I did that and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I I succeeded at that, Mm -hmm. you know? And so that proud moment of herself was, it's just something you, you can't, um, you just, I don't know. It just goes home with you. It just, it just sits in your heart for sure. Yes. That's a great example. Just even thinking too, of celebrating the small wins, because you're right. Like a lot of people focus on the bigger wins, but those small wins are what get you to the big wins. Yes. But even the sleep, right? Like that's something that's so imperative, like we were talking about. But the fact that like she was able to do it at once, it also gives her permission and that uh, ability to think, okay, I can do this again. And like, like I mean, you exam- like outlined it beautifully, but it's just amazing that you were able to help her through that. But she like did it with your guidance. And that's what it's about, right? With coaching too, just being able to help guide them to make those decisions, to really look at the lens from a different perspective. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing that story with us. And when you look at your journey thus far, what has been maybe two or three tips you could leave with us today when it comes to things that you wish you would have known in the beginning that you know now? Yeah, for sure. I would say one is, like I said, um, asking for help for sure. Like that, Mm -hmm. again, in any kind of way that makes sense, it could something so simple people want to help your friends want to help they just don't know how to help so that (laughs) one's super huge um and I feel like the other one is you do know what you're doing you do know right and so you know I think sometimes we get nervous to go on Facebook live or when people ask us questions or what if I say it wrong what if the statistics has changed or you do know what you're talking about and how you do know, like your passion and love is there. And if you're doing it through that, you know what you're doing, you do. And it's actually, it's one of my stickies on here. Like, I know the answers. It's okay. okay. You know? <laughs> um, and the other one for me, speaking of my stickies on here <laughs> is that reminding yourself that you get to do this. 
I get to live my dream. You know, I think sometimes we get nervous, which is, there's nothing wrong with being nervous when you go speak somewhere or you get your first client or maybe that bigger client that you've been so excited for. We can go through like the woes, but I think the biggest thing that I reminded myself is I get to meet this big client. I get to coach this person. I get, you know, I get to be interviewed by you, you know, so reminding myself that this is an opportunity for myself. Like you said, seeing that in a different light, I think talking to myself that way was a really big thing for me. Yes. It goes back to like believing in ourselves, like trusting ourselves of understanding, okay, we do know the answers. We might not feel like it, or we might feel like I was just talking about this with a client feeling inadequate or feeling like, well, do I deserve that self-worth piece of being able to really pour into ourselves instead? And I know that's a huge basis of what you help your clients with too, of just really elevating that self-worth because that's a huge part of self-love. Yeah. And being able to understand that. I I so agree. Yes. (laughs) And, you know, I didn't ask you this earlier, but I feel like I, I need to, you know, put it out there. What was that initial thought of really going from working in the mental health field to having your coaching business? What really triggered that? Like, okay, I want to make this a business. Yeah. So I guess I kind of always had a little bit of like, I want to do something on my own. I always kind of pictured myself having maybe like a nonprofit or like a side business type thing. Mm -hmm. But as I started speaking about it more and more and kind of putting it out there, you know, it was kind of like, oh, why don't you just do your own business? And I just never really thought of that per se. It was kind of like, oh, cool. Yeah. One day, maybe. And then again, going back to that support system, you know, I was doing the nine to five and things like that. And I called my friend out of frustration. I just said, this is going on. I'm just really frustrated. And she goes, when are you ever going to start that business? I'm going, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know, maybe she goes, when you, she's, and you know, get to that whole lecture of like holding yourself back, you know, that girl talk, you know, we don't get into it, but, (laughs) but, um, but yeah. And so I did, I said, okay what do I have to lose? So, cause I, ha- I have experience. I can always, you can always go back to that nine to five. Mm-hmm. Those nine to fives aren't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, there's you're, you'll figure it out. I think that's always the biggest thing. Like I know I had to keep trying to remind myself that I know I will figure it out if there comes that hard time, which businesses bring those hard times, especially financially. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, what a great friend too, of just really, reflecting on what you truly wanted, but bringing that out and remembering, oh, I do want to do this. I did. There was like a deeper purpose behind it as well. Like not to say you didn't love the nine to five and we can get frustrated, especially in the mental health field. It's very hard. And some days, some days it's super rewarding, but you know, sometimes it's time to go and start doing shifting that energy of where you're meant to be and really helping other people on their journey. And I just, I find that so important. And like, I mean, more and more people need to talk about it. And there's a lot of like, it's a trend word now, like self-love. What are your thoughts around that? The yeah, of course. Word. Yeah, of course. So kind of putting back off, like what you were saying first, that supportive friend, going back to saying, remind yourself who's in your environment and who is supporting you, mm-hmm. you know, making sure you surround yourself with them. But no, they, they're right. The trend words of self-love, stress, spree, mental health, it's great that they're trend words. I'm not, you know, there's, I don't have any like, frustration towards them. Obviously it's bringing things to light, mm-hmm. but I think the thing is, is it is, it, it's not a new thing. I think that's my biggest thing is like, none of this is new. Mm-hmm. Stress isn't new. Mental health isn't new. Self-love isn't new. Right. And mm-hmm. so I think this pandemic and social media and things like that have brought it more to light. So I think just remind mm-hmm. yourself that it's not new. It's always been here, but going back to like that coaching, it's the, what action steps are going to do next. Right. So educating yourself, learning about yourself, I think are really important when it comes to that. Oh, well, Jessica, I've been enjoying this conversation so much. You're such a light. Um, but we are going to jump into the rapid fire questions if you're ready for them. Let's go. All right. The first question is who is your hero? Oh, my grandma. Mm. Yes. Yes. She's my life. And what motivates you to work smarter? What motivates me to work smarter? Um, I would say for me, I don't like wasting time. So <laughs> I think being able to focus is really good for me. So I would say yes, that one. Yeah. 
times of the essence, right? <laughs> so if you were a superhero, what would be your power or powers? Oh, can I be super cheesy and say that I want people to love themselves? Can that be the power? <laughs> That's amazing power. And there's no right or wrong answer. So, you know, <laughs> it's what you would want for others to, you know, <laughs> that's what it's about. What is the most daring thing you've ever done? Oh, um, okay. I've been skydiving before. I feel like that's pretty daring. Uh, obviously my business. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> those are two very daring things. I've never skydived, but that's definitely on my top list bucket list right now. I recommend it. I wouldn't go again, but I'm like, cool. That was fun. <laughs> it was like a one-time thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll work on that one. <laughs> what is the phone app that you use the most? Uh, okay. Again, nerd hat, audible and podcast. <laughs> there you go. Those are the best. You're learning something new every day. <laughs> Crazy, and right? Speaking of audible, what is the last book that you've listened to or read? The one I'm reading right now is called The Power of Agency. Hmm. It's basically, he's it's the way they're describing like that inner self-critic. So, yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's a new one. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> and what is your favorite family recipe, whether it's a traditional one or you just love making it together as a family? Um, I, I know that, so I don't, I cook a lot. The one that we always make with my grandma, she calls it her, um, Pat surprise and it's basically just like green beans and like vegetables and some sauce mixed into it but um it's actually really good <laughs> so we make that with her when I see her yeah well it sounds delicious a nice little <laughs> surprise <laughs> <laughs> if you had to describe yourself as an animal personality type style what animal would you be oh I don't know it's because I'm a dog person but like the first animal comes to my brain is a dog <laughs> yeah I, yeah it sounds I think because like they're just like energetic and they want to love people and it's just like hey let's just go with the flow guys yeah yeah I, I could see that <laughs> and they're very warm too you know right, right. <laughs> so if you have a day off because I know time is very important to you how it how how do you spend your day off what's your favorite way to spend it definitely being outside I would say if I'm outside it's definitely the best thing for me for sure I know how I get emotionally when I'm inside too long so mm -hmm. um being outside for sure um with the dogs with the dogs always 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 once always behind me um <laughs> I know mine's right there <laughs> I would say any outside activity for sure yeah that's the biggest one the outdoors it does something to the psyche <laughs> for sure yes and what's something an outsider wouldn't know about your industry? Um, I guess that like, it's hard, you know, even though you love what you do and you have passion for what you do and you um, are being there for people, I think sometimes it's hard. And I think for me, I would say it's hard, but you want the best for everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and that part can be hard because you have no control over it. Right. I can give you all the tools. I can give you the toolbox. Um, but it ends up being on, on the, the client, you know? So I think just, it can be hard because you just want the best for everybody. Yes, you're absolutely right. And that's what it's about, right? Especially like, I mean, you didn't go into mental health for no reason. There's like that heart and just wanting to see people really succeed in life and just loving themselves from the inside out. And that's like what I keep hearing from you as well. And just the community you've created for yourself yeah. and for all your clients. Well, Jessica, I have so enjoyed just having you here today. But before I let you go, where can people find you, hire you? We're going to link everything below, but if you could let us know too. Yeah, of course. So I'm um, pretty active on Instagram. So if you want to do journey to yourself one-on-one um, and then my website in general, it has all my contact information, forms complete. So that's going to be journey to yourself.net. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, all your wonderful tips, everything around self-love, stress. But with that being said, thank you so much, Jessica, for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. And make sure to like, subscribe, comment below. What was the biggest takeaway from Jessica? I'm sure she would love to see that comment as well. And we'll see you on the next video.